We all need fresh drinking water to survive, but in many parts of the world, including areas in the United States, drinking water supplies are becoming scarce due to drought, reduced supplies in rivers and lakes, and overpumped underground aquifers. Many communities have turned to or are considering the endless supply of water in our oceans and seas. Others are already using or are planning to use brackish or salty water from underground aquifers. The high salt content in both of these sources would normally be undrinkable, but that's where desalination technology comes in. Desalination, also known as desal, removes salts and minerals from seawater or brackish water to produce drinking water. The technology used in desalination is reverse osmosis, which forces water through semi-permeable membranes to remove salts and other impurities. Today, there are 300 million people throughout the world who rely on desalinated water to meet at least some of their daily water needs. That water comes from 16,000 desalination plants in 150 countries. In the U.S., there are currently 250 desalination plants operating in Texas, Florida, and California, with many more being planned. The West Basin Municipal Water District in Southern California has included Ocean Desal in its future plans to reduce their dependence on importing water by 50%. We will do that by doubling our recycling program, doubling our conservation program, and adding about 10% of our future supply from ocean water desal. So that provides us a locally controlled, diverse portfolio, which is what you need to do to deal with future water scarcity. As more communities consider desal, there are environmental challenges that must be addressed. One of the main issues facing desal projects is the amount of energy required and the associated indirect greenhouse gas emissions resulting from producing drinking water. Engineers are working to solve these challenges by reducing the amount of energy needed to operate desal plants. Energy recovery devices are standard in new desal projects and membrane filters are becoming more efficient. Engineers and scientists are also looking at renewable energy sources, such as solar energy, to power the plants. Impacts on marine life from seawater intakes poses another challenge for desal projects. However, recent studies have found that appropriately sited, designed, and operated seawater intakes can minimize the impacts on marine species. The West Basin Municipal Water District is studying wedge wire screens at its desal testing facility in Redondo Beach, California. We're able to screen out all adult and mature fish, as well as the majority, if not all, of the mature larvae in the ocean. A challenge for inland communities is the disposal of brine concentrate that is removed during the reverse osmosis process. That is being addressed through evaporation ponds or deep well injection. El Paso Water Utilities has been successfully operating a desalination plant since 2007 that uses deep well injection to dispose of brine concentrate. Okay, the reverse osmosis separates out your stream of water that has the high salt in it. And then from there, uh, we pump it to the injection wells. And we use the term injection wells, but we're not pressurizing it into the ground. It's just falling down the well by gravity and then goes out into the formation. Advancements will continue to improve energy efficiency, disposal methods, and increase environmental protection, providing a reliable and safe drinking water source while protecting the environment is of paramount importance to existing and planned desal projects in the U.S. and throughout the world. To learn more about desalination, visit athirstyplanet.com.